Job Hunting 101, providing you with the tools you need in your job search. Career fairs, resume writing, job banks, veteran programs. Job Hunting 101. Hello and welcome back to the Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance. This is the fourth in our series of Job Hunting 101. We are going to concentrate today on veterans assistance to gaining employment. My name is Michael White and I've been with the Tampa Bay Workforce for four years and I'm a local veterans employment representative and I'm retired U.S. Army. I'm Bill Farnand, retired U.S. Air Force after 30 years. I'm the military family employment advocate with the Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance. My name is Troy Johnson. I'm the Transition Program Manager for MacDill Air Force Base. I'm also a retired Army veteran of 21 years. My name is Efrain Costa. I'm retired out of the United States Army. I'm a local veteran employment representative with Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance and currently performing the duties as a TAP tra facilitator in MacDill Air Force Base. Right now I want to talk specifically about the Transition Assistance Program because that's <coughs> had a lot of discussion both in the press and on the Department of Defense website and just general discussion throughout the military. Troy, would you please? The Transition Assistance Program is a national partnership between the Department of Defense, the Department of Labor, the VA, and Homeland Security. There's basic four key components to the Transition Program. The first component is the pre-separation counseling. This is mandatory that every veteran that have served on active duty for more than 180 days, that they must receive a DD-2648 no later than 90 days before they separate or retire. Somebody that's retiring can start the transition process two years out. Somebody that's separating can start the process one year out. The second component of the, uh, the TAP program is the DOL TAP workshop, and I'll let Efren elaborate a little bit more on that. The other two components are the VA benefits briefing and the DTAP briefing, which is the Disabled Transition Assistance Program. Additionally, what we have to offer with the transition program is we do quarterly career fairs. Uh, we average about 70 employers and 560 job seekers that attend our career fairs. We do our own one-on-one -on -one career coaching uh, to assist them as they transition out. We also have our own skills development workshops from resume writing to interviewing to federal job search information. And we also have a group in, via LinkedIn, uh, McDill Air Force Base Transition Program. This is a professional networking group that, uh, you know, I try to get all the employers and all the veterans to meet and to network. Mm -hmm. Efren, how do we at Tampa Bay Workforce facilitate the transition program that Troy's just described? We actually facilitate uh, the TAP seminar workshop on a monthly basis. Uh, it's usually about uh, two and a half days. The first two and a half days belong to the Department of Labor, or us, the Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance, we provide employment services. And the other half of the day is actually covered by the VA folks, where they receive a VA benefit and a Disabled Transition Assistance Program overview uh, on, on day, uh, day three. We also enhance the current Transition Assistance Program right now, a workshop. We add additional one more day where we bring folks from the Education Center, we bring guest speakers, career coaches, we have somebody to cover the SBP, Survivor Benefit Plan, uh, um, and also we got employer panels to be part of the seminar. Bill, and how do you discuss job opportunities with prospective spouses that may still be waiting for that year to pass well, and they need to, need to get employed here in McDill or while elsewhere? They're, uh, while the spouse is on active duty, uh, the, the, the other member that is at home, the non-military member, has uh, employment rights and, and they have me to be able to come to and actually talk to, uh, to talk about some of the same things that the, uh, the folks that are transitioning out get a chance to do. They also, probably even more so, uh, when they come new to the area, they don't know anything a lot about Tampa. They don't know about uh, the different types of jobs opportunities and, and the wage bases and things that we have going on here. So I facilitate them in, in helping them to tailor a resume to this area 
to tell them about some of the different uh, opportunities for networking and different opportunities for training programs that are available to help them transition into the Tampa Bay area. Effort, back to the gold card initiative. I had described that earlier of what it was about. How do you use those things contained within that program within the TAP? Delivery? Well, every, every TAP participant received a gold card certificate. We actually provide them an overview uh, during the uh, two and a half days, uh, usually uh, that we actually hit employment. Uh, we covered overview. Uh, we encouraged them to get connected with a one-stop center and a local veteran employment uh, representative at their gaining state of home of record. We also reemphasize that the gold car initiative will be provided. They're going to be receiving case managing services for a period for six months. Uh, also, opportunities for training. Uh, they will be able to receive labor market information. Uh, we will help them uh, create an uh, IDP, an individual development plan, in order to guide them from the armed forces into the civilian workforce. Mm -hmm. and eventually make them easier to make a, a decision or a choice what industry and occupation they're going to be targeting. Having said all of that, guys, what do you think the impact is going to be with the Vow to Hire Heroes Act that the President signed back in November? Well, for obviously for us at McDill, it's going to be uh, uh, a very traumatic impact. For, for one, right now at McDill, the only component uh, is that pre-separation counseling. That is the only mandatory component. As of right now, the, the DOL TAP workshop is a voluntary workshop. We see approximately 250 members a quarter that go through the transition process, you know, in starting that pre-separation counseling. Uh, right now, we have about 100 that go through a quarter that go through the DOL TAP workshop. So you're looking at uh, doubling that plus that uh, to provide that type of training to, to those, you know, mm -hmm. separating or retiring. So as far as logistics wise, mm -hmm. uh, we're still working that piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Well, what are we doing for our older vets? We have them from 22 to 82 looking for work and, and how do we help them there? One of, the, one of the things, and I think one of the common things to, with, with all of our vets and all of our job seekers, especially within the, the Florida area, is the Employ Florida Marketplace. Uh, the Employ Florida Marketplace allows a veteran, a non-veteran, a spouse, anyone that's a job seeker to go out and, and hunt for jobs. They register out there, they can post a resume, they can search for jobs, and when that resume is posted, an employer can actually go and seek those people that are job hunting at the same time. So that becomes a kind of a common denominator for everyone of every age group. Uh, high, school, high school children looking for summer jobs, they can find them there. Older veterans can find jobs there depending upon their qualifications, but that becomes the common denominator for all of them as the employee forward a marketplace. Mm -hmm. Ephraim, what are we doing to take care of those veterans that are leaving the state of Florida to go back to their home of record? Well, that's a unique uh, situation I encounter uh, as a TAP facilitator. And by uh, my, my intent, or our intent in the Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance, along with the Department of Defense, is to, to get that armed force individual connected with a local veteran employment representative at the home of record or the gaining state. We actually try to get them registered on Employee Florida Marketplace, and through the lever DVOP locators, we find their local veteran employment representative, get them connected. As soon as those two individuals get connected, we drop out of the media and get the returning that armed force individual or vet to the veteran career matter, manager for employment services. What have we done for the Florida National Guard and the reserve components? One of the issues with the National Guard enlisted reserves is uh, uh, due to missions, orders are getting cut. Uh, they'll come up to back to the state. Uh, as you see, we, we perform uh, support on Yellow River events, and a lot of them, what we encounter uh, is that a lot of them are coming out of orders immediately, maybe 45 to 60 days. Uh, what we did on, on the last Yellow River event that we participated was we invite employers, we identify what target industry they were seeking, what occupations. We try to connect those employers with those particular armed forces because they're still serving, but they were going to come up out of orders in maybe 20, 25 days. Our intent is to get them connected with those prospective employers and eventually surrender him or her to a local veteran employment representative within the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. 
Bill, how do we connect the, the, the spouse of that active duty person? At the, at the same time, when, when a spouse gets activated, the military member gets activated, that spouse automatically becomes eligible for one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, services from, from myself, the, the family employment advocate. Uh, we offer, again, all of those same things that for the spouses on active duty orders, uh, National Guard or Reserve, including the regular active duty folks, and we offer all of those services to them as well as uh, to, to spouses that are, have been in the area for some period of time. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, uh, we also provide services to guards and, and reserve folks. Mm -hmm. um, they're welcome to come to our center. If, if they've been on active duty for 180 days, they've got to go through the pre-separation counseling. Mm -hmm. We have skills development workshops for them, one-on-one -on -one career coaching assistance. Uh, have a strong network of employers so we can assist them to kind of get connected to some targeted employers. Mm -hmm. This, the, act of the Airman Family Readiness Center at McDill has a, has a good uh, a working relationship with, with the Tampa Bay Workforce Alliance and we with them. And we partner to take care of the, our family members, our spouses, our active duty people, and our veterans that are, are transitioning. And so we keep that as a, as a close working relationship at all times. Well, it's as close as it can be because you sit at the facility with Troy, so exactly, and that that really makes a difference. And Efren and I share an office there, actually, right. too. So that makes it that makes it just that much better for all of us. Yes. What about the reserve weekend drills? How are we handling that piece? Are we reaching out to them enough? Are we trying to increase our our outreach to them while they're in a drill mode? Well, unique will be on the, as we try to target reserve commands. Uh, we, we need to get in there particular drill dates. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we need to be part of that particular dates that they're actually drilling so we can actually provide an overview of the services that we have available. But just keep in mind, uh, any reserve com component uh, member is required to go to the preset uh, briefing. It's mandatory. So as they go through the preset briefing, man, uh, actually they receive mm -hmm. an overview or all the benefits available, especially employment. And right away, I know the Department of Defense get them connected with the local veteran employment representative mm -hmm. at the one-stop centers. It just seems to me that when we've attended those yellow ribbon and the reserve component events, there's a thousand yard stare on some of those young veterans when they don't have the job in their pocket. And we need to talk about that. Well. If, I, if you allow me, please. Uh, see, it's, it's really stressful. They'll come out from the deployment right away, okay? And they're short on orders. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, the only thing that, the, that we know is how to serve in the military. In order for you to prepare, you need to have an idea of how to establish a job search campaign. Mm -hmm. You're coming out of uniform right away, and you got to look for a job. And, and that takes some planning. Mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes our young folks, even all some of all mature folks need time to develop a plan and uh, understand how to create an effective job search campaign. And this concludes this first segment, and thank you very much. Thank you. Employers, you can search candidate resumes and research labor market information at employflorida.com. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. Job seekers, you can upload your resume, view job postings, and research labor market information at employflorida.com. Every year, one million families face losing their homes to foreclosure. If you're ignoring your mortgage issues, things will only get worse. Call 1-888-995-HOPE because nothing is worse than doing nothing. Welcome back to Veterans Assistance in Gaining Employment. In our first segment, we were talking about different programs, transition assistance, and all of that, and how does that affect our soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard, and Navy. 
about to retire or about to separate. Well, the next part of that is having said all of that inf and provided all that information, what is it that the employers expect from us to have done before that service member walks through their front door for that very first interview? And so now, based on your experience and all of the time you've spent in different places, Let's go from there and see what, what do you all think we are doing and what aren't we doing that we need to change? And to provide that information sure. to those members that are sitting here watching us right now so that they feel comfortable, I am truly work ready. Efren. Well, usually one of the st uh, steps that we cover is that we, we emphasize, uh, emphasize a lot on research and target audience, target industry and occupation. Identify who you want to work for, who's hiring, what occupations are in demand, and then target that particular companies they're currently hiring. Go and utilize all the resources that you have available, especially the internet, the library, and research that target audience or target employer. Research, be prepared for that initial uh, interview, okay? Especially the first one, which is usually the phone interview. Mm -hmm. uh, as you prepare and research, you'll be prepared for the actually be able to answer questions about what's going on with a company, do you have any particular events, what projects we have going on in there, how your skills match the uh, company culture also. Uh, maybe Troy and Bill want to elaborate a little bit more. I like to, I like to hone in before they're ready. Um, there's some things they got to do prior to that. There's a process, you know, there's things that they need to do. Some of the key mistakes that I see veterans as they transition out are, are one, number one, probably the, the top mistake would be is they start the transition process too late. A retiree can start the process two years out, again a separatee one year out. This will allow them to go to this pre-separation counseling to, uh, you know, it, it's an overview of the services and entitlements that that's, uh, they're entitled to. We talk about employment, we talk about education, barriers to employment, you know, healthcare needs, things of that nature. That's an, an individual transition plan. That is very key to transitioning out. Now, additionally with that, they need to determine their career path. A lot of them, especially ones, uh, you know, in more of a combat MOS is not used for me, for example. You know, I was a combat engineer for 21 years. Uh, whatever I did in the military it doesn't relate to the civilian workforce. Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, based on my experience, I was an operations sergeant, so an operations manager. Well, I realized I, didn't, I, didn't, I did not identify barriers. Okay, for one, I needed a bachelor's degree to, to be competitive. I didn't have that. I was applying for, I didn't know the industry, you know, mm -hmm. even though operation manager, I mean, they're, they're broad. Operation, what industry? So I didn't really have a, a, a career, career path, you know. I didn't identify my career path. I also didn't know the process. Mm -hmm. Most people that get out of the military, yeah. they get that resume together, and what do they do? They shotgun blast it out there through Monster and Career Builder and some of these online poster boards, and they wonder why they're not getting any telephone calls, okay? So... Has anyone ever done a study that looks at the testing that they do before they come into service? I'm thinking more of the one-time enlistment and now they're getting out for the, whatever reason. The Armed reason. Services Vocational Aptitude Battery right. takes, a, takes right. a whole, the right. whole realm of, of what, what you know and what you have right. a little bit of, of, a, right. of a skill in based upon whatever you've been exposed to beforehand. Uh, some of those skills will get honed while you're actually in the armed forces. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to, to uh, elaborate on that, that Troy said. Uh, he said he was a combat engineer uh, and, and had no directly relatable skills, but there were things that he did exactly. within the Army itself that were directly transferable uh, to civilian occupations. He had some, some teamwork skills, he had some leadership skills, he had some camaraderie skills and communication skills. These are the types of transferable skills, regardless of what you did in your exactly. armed forces time, mm -hmm. that will transfer directly over to uh, the civilian world. Okay. Uh, transition is exactly what it is. It's not a turn to key off and become a civilian. It's a transition from a way of life to another. Right. The other way, one other, one other thing, <clears throat> as far as, as uh, those transferable skills, uh, the website ONET online is, is absolutely the place to do that that will allow you to put your military uh, AFSC, MOS, 
whatever, whatever you're calling it, and put that in there, and it will show you which jobs, which career paths are directly relatable to what your military experience has given mm -hmm. you. And that is a good way for what Efren said to pick your target industry mm -hmm. so that you have an idea of where you want to go. That also helps uh, military to civilian, uh, you know, conversion. A lot of people get in the military and they still talk military. You know, yes, sir, sergeants, missions, uh, or just, you know, the industry military type jargon. That is a good tool, you know, to help them kind of, you know, uh, convert that language to civilian mm -hmm. type language. Cause that, that was, that was uh, somewhat of a challenge for me. I know when I got out, it's still not trying to talk all military. One of the, one of the things that happens here is, is that the, when we do that resume, the first thing we need to do is demilitarize it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the armed forces are very good at acronyms, uh, and most civilian companies don't use acronyms near as much as the armed forces does. So we need to get rid of those acronyms on our resume, in our daily talk, uh, one thing that people overlook considerably is they talk about GMT. Uh, it's, it's Greenwich Mean Time, but it is on a 24-hour clock. Uh, during your entire time that you were in the armed forces, you dealt with a 24-hour clock. Uh, most civilian occupations deal with a 12-hour clock in an AM, PM type situation, so you mm -hmm. need to get rid of that 24-hour clock mentality. How much resistance are we experiencing from those service members in making this transition? Are they adapting fast enough? Do they bring the right tools that from the service right. to the table when they come for transition training? That, that's an individual basis, more so right. than anything. You can't, you can't put a label or, or a point right. of finger at. That's a, some individuals are much, uh, much easier to, uh, to mold and train uh, into new things than others. And so that we, uh, we work hard at doing that. That's part of what that whole transition program is about. And one quick point, too. If they go to this pre-separation counseling, when we talk about education, okay, if they can identify their career path and they give themselves a year to say, okay, this is my particular career path, and I'm going to do career exploration like Efren's talking about, you need to identify what does it take to be that particular person in that industry. So... If you, especially, say, IT industry, for example, you have to have IT certifications. You know, you have to have degrees. You have to have certain licensing. So it's, it's imperative you identify that as quickly as possible and try to get as much of that in the military. That way, as you transition, mm -hmm. it's a smooth transition mm -hmm. instead of trying to do it, until, you know, when you get out. Mm -hmm. And now you're trying to get the certification. It's imperative that they identify that career path. Uh, barriers to uh, employment and try to overcome those barriers as quickly as possible or within that time frame. Mm -hmm. And we emphasize this particular guidance is received during your pre-separation or pre-retirement. So it's critical those are armed forces individuals and the chain of command understand if you have somebody separating you need to have them there 12 months out. If you have somebody retiring, in reality, they think, oh, you, you know, Efren, I think I got two years. I got enough time. No, you don't. You don't have enough time. Okay, you actually have less than two years. So you need to be in pre-separation or pre-retirement, take advantage of that particular guidance and start working. Start working and get your career path online. Uh, and you will, be, you will have a successful entry in the workforce. One, one thing for our, for our senior leadership, uh, be they enlisted or officer, uh, they need to understand that they're gonna lose this person no matter what at the end of whatever time frame it is, the 20 year, right. the 30 let year, them go. Th let, let them go. They need to have that time to transition to become a, a better member of, of the civilian community, uh, regardless of where they're going to go. But, th but the leadership needs to understand that they need to have that time uh, to, to participate in the separation and, and transitioning programs. Thank you. This concludes our second session and we'll pick it up in momentarily. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Job Seekers, you can upload your resume, view job postings, and research labor market information at EmployFlorida.com. You know, when I was younger, man, my, my brother was the one who really took care of me, man. Is that right? Hey, he'd wake me up in the morning, get me ready for school, take a shower, have, make me some breakfast. Where your brother at now? Oh, he know. All right. I get lonely, nobody to talk to. I felt like quitting school. He looked at my dad in my eye, he told me, if not for me, do it for him. Give Josh and our class of 08 the boost they need to graduate. Join us at boostup.org.
reason why should I volunteer to do other people's taxes? You'll help hardworking Hillsborough residents get all the tax credits they're entitled to, and you'll learn a valuable new skill. What's the time commitment? You could be a tax preparer, a greeter, or an interpreter at 30 convenient locations in only two to four hours a week. Sounds like a great opportunity. Where do I sign up? UnitedWayTampaBay.org. Volunteer to be a tax preparer. We need you too. And this is Billy when he was a baby. He's so cute. And this was his first school play. And this is Billy's graduation from grammar school. Where do you see the videos I have? I have so many tapes. Let me find them. No, I can't wait. Where do you see the potty training we did? Mom, our VCR doesn't work anymore. We can't watch those tapes. Oh. Kathy, now you can watch Billy's potty training video. What do you mean? I had all the tapes transferred to DVD at Tampa Bay Community Network. I didn't have to mail the tapes away, and I got them transferred very quickly. Employers, you can search candidate resumes and research labor market information at EmployFlorida.com. And welcome back. Veterans Assistance to Gaining Employment. Earlier we talked about several things, and I'm joined now by three employers. And what we set the stage for is what did we do for those service members about to leave? What kind of training did we provide them? What did we encourage them to do? How long did we have to talk with them? For the case of retirees, up to two years, they know about it and they hear about the beginnings of what they need to be doing. For those that are separating from service after one enlistment or two, they only have one year and they have to get themselves ready. And when you mm -hmm. take out all the holidays and leave and vacation and all those other things, they don't have very long at all. But now they're coming to you. So joining us now are three employers. My name is Josie Allen Choate. I'm a retired veteran, and I currently work at J.P. Morgan Chase & Company as an executive recruiter. My name is Pamela Taylor. I am a staffing specialist with Manpower. Hi, my name is Ellen Donegan, and I'm the recruiting specialist for a company um, in Tampa and throughout uh, Florida and Georgia called TAW. The last thing we talked about before we broke in our last segment was what do you, the employers, expect us to have done in order to present our veterans to you for that very first employment? So based on your all's experience, we'd like to hear from you. What is it that we're doing right? What is anything that we're doing is wrong? What do we need to change? What are you seeing? Some of the things I think that you're doing right, um, especially for veterans and those that are exiting the military today, is having the transition assistance program um, with all the different services, teaching them what they need to do when they're exiting as far as resume writing, um, how to dress when they're going to employers for jobs, teaching them how to do their research when they're looking at different employers. I feel the same way as far as um, preparing the um, veterans for what to expect in the workplace, how to prepare themselves doing their market research as well. And I also think um, it's also beneficial to have employers such as us to come and volunteer and give them real life experience, give them an opportunity to really um, understand and from our perspective of mm -hmm. what it is they yes. should and should not be doing. Again, the resume writing, there's a lot of resources that you offer them that are very beneficial that people in civilian life don't have the opportunity to take advantage of and uh, they're very fortunate that they do have that support mm -hmm. um, in yes. all levels, not just interviewing, but of course what benefits um, mm -hmm. are due to them. And um, I, I feel that it's a very beneficial um, program. And I think that you all do a great job. There's a lot of um, people that are very dedicated that work in the veterans units that 
are very helpful to those that are transitioning. So mm -hmm. I think you guys do a good job. Mm -hmm. How are we doing with the, the, the education piece for those coming out? Are they, do they have enough? Do they need more? What do we need to do to encourage them to seek either training inside the military or that civilian education before they leave? Are they coming out smart enough? The veterans that we're seeing today, they're coming out with their degrees. Um, what I saw 10 years ago, we didn't see as many veterans coming out that had the education that they have today. Mm -hmm. So I think they're on the right track, mm -hmm. getting the degrees before they come out. And if they haven't gotten the degrees, then um, attempting to further their education when they do get out and continuing mm -hmm. to go to school and get the degrees. Now, if um, a lot of them don't really know what types of opportunities they're looking at. Um, I would suggest going to some type of a trade school mm -hmm. to try to hone up on their skills and get more uh, experience mm -hmm. and to also learn the types of positions that they are looking for. I think it's important if they do have limited education to emphasize the training and the certifications mm -hmm. on their resume that mm -hmm. they received while they were mm -hmm. in with military service. Very important to stress that. Most definitely. And I think, too, that uh, depending upon, I'll give an example, someone that's in the Navy that's got nuclear uh, background um, is very mm -hmm. beneficial. That, yeah. From what I understand, I think it's like a million dollar education that they get. And um, I think that they really need to research what type of positions they would like to do. Um, if they don't do any further screening with these vets to kind of see where their strengths are and their skills lie, maybe that they need to do that a little bit more um, to kind of give them a path of where they may want to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I would also suggest the research in the companies that they're looking yes. at. A lot of the companies offer the opportunities for them to further their educations. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing which companies offer those opportunities is um, something that the veterans need to do more research. What about our veterans that have been out for some time? They were in Gulf War I mm -hmm. or they were in the 70s or 80s. We have them from 22 to 82. Mm -hmm. How do we help them, the older ones? And well, I'm in that category. <laughs> Well, I think what we, you know, what needs to be focused on is definitely their experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it needs to be showcased in their resume and concentrated on the industry or the position that mm -hmm. they're going to be looking at, making sure that they're not too um, using too many military jargon or or speak, as I mm -hmm. say, more civilian in tone. Uh, I think that that's very important. Well, what's the limit on a resume? Sometimes I hear one page for every 10 years. With mine, mine be four pages long. That's way too much information. Well, How do we, we tailor that? We sometimes tell them to go back no more than 10 years on a resume, Correct. at Correct. least two pages, um, mm -hmm. if possible. But you may have been out of the military for at least 15 to 20 years, and you mm -hmm. have a wealth of experience and knowledge. In that case, I would um, say no more than three pages, at least mm -hmm. to showcase your experience in those other markets when you're coming over to different types of employers. Yeah, I would agree. I think that um, if you put the total years on your resume as to when you were in the military mm -hmm. and some of the positions, so an employer does have an idea mm -hmm. of exactly what you've done because there may be a military contractor that really is more interested in what you did. Uh, earlier in your career mm -hmm. as well as what you've done in your civilian life, mm -hmm. but that would be a very important piece for them. Mm -hmm. What about those vets that are my age that don't have the technology that they need? I don't use a computer. I've been a plumber for 35 years once I left the Navy. Mm -hmm. I don't use a computer. I don't know how to turn it on. What's a mouse? <laughs> Go get your granddaughter. She'll <laughs> tell you all about it. How do we overcome that? To, to, to say to them in their resume, I want to learn and I'll do everything I can and I'm working at it, but I'm not there yet. How do you accept that kind of enthusiasm? I think you said it right there, is the enthusiasm. The enthusiasm. It's part of the interview process, showing them that you want, that you're eager to learn, that mm -hmm. you want to, mm -hmm. to find out resources to use for the position. I mean, there are mm -hmm. resources out there for training. Mm -hmm. um, become familiar with them. And I would think go to your workforce center, too, and okay. ask for the veterans rep mm -hmm. or somebody there that could help you mm -hmm. with that, mm -hmm. because you do have computers there that mm -hmm. are accessible to them. 
and you can, you know, there's job listings. I mean, a lot of uh, companies are on the internet, mm -hmm. but they all are in the newspaper and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that um, as many people are as um, not friendly with the internet. I think that um, if they just have some people, somebody guide them a little bit, that they would feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. well, we're trying to do that in our center with our work studies that mm -hmm. they're going to school. They're there for one reason, to help those veterans to, Correct. to work on the computer and get it done. And there are a lot of um, high schools that offer programs too that will help them to learn the different functions of the computer, getting mm -hmm. on the internet, how to mm -hmm. um, look at different companies on the internet. And a lot of companies also offer some retraining mm -hmm. um, to help them get the experience they need. What are the absolute do's and don'ts for resumes? I mean, you must see thousands of them a week. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be some favorites. Well, Don't do this because. Well, I would uh, limit my personal information yes. that I put on there. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't need to know your date of birth. We don't need to know the date that you graduated from high school. We don't need to know your marital status or mm -hmm. your political affiliation or anything, <laughs> unless it's an you know an organization that is a professional organization. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that. Yes. Um, not putting your DD two fourteen. That's exactly. not something that you need to do. And sometimes you know we get candidates, and not I'm not saying so much veterans, but just candidates in general that will give their social security number out, mm -hmm. their driver's license now, yes. all right. their personal mm -hmm. information which they're not required to do, and of course, for safety purposes, you don't mm -hmm. want them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is like their cover letter. Sometimes mm -hmm. the cover letter has mm -hmm. more information about Correct. the position yes. of, of what they can do than their resume does. So I think also suggesting a dedicated email address mm -hmm. for yes. your job search, mm -hmm. something that's focused directly on job search, not going and to your personal. Professional, right. I would say. Professional, yes. I yes. said that, exactly. And, and I would say having the, having the, <laughs> don't have your voicemail with music on it that's going to play the whole song <laughs> and <laughs> where when you try to reach them it's playing the song and you get tired of listening and you hang up, you don't leave a message for them because that could hinder them as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that they understand that this is the first impression mm -hmm. that Correct. they are giving yes. to a, a potential employer. And I would also recommend that if you have a LinkedIn account, that you put your LinkedIn information. Yes, mm -hmm. I would not put my Facebook or my YouTube or anything other than a professional link LinkedIn. to see exactly to see you know their professional experience mm -hmm. and so forth. What would you say is the most important thing about going to a job fair or something similar to that, <clears throat> the career fair or a job fair? And there is a distinction. Mm -hmm. What should the veterans be doing when they go there? What should they expect? Well, I think first of all, you get a list of the names of all the companies that are right. going to be there, yeah. <clears throat> and you target which companies you feel are most appropriate mm -hmm. for your job search. You find out what you can about the company, mm -hmm. and then you target that, and you need to target your resume towards oh, specific okay. positions. I would go onto the websites of these companies, find out as much as I could, mm -hmm. what job opportunities are available, because I knew me as a recruiter, it means a lot to me when I have someone come to me and say, I looked your company up mm -hmm. and I really was interested because you do this, this, and this. That shows that they have genuine interest in that. And of course, dressing professionally, mm -hmm. having Always. a resume ready to go. Yes. How and long is my good. elevator speech? 30 seconds. 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Max? Max. Most definitely, mm -hmm. and uh, just to say, hi, this is what I, who I am, what I do, and mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. And yes. one of the things that's a pet peeve of mine is if I ask you what kind of job you're looking for and you, you say, say, I can I do anything, <laughs> what kind of work do you have, um, I would expect that you would you know, not be that indecisive that mm -hmm. you would know what mm -hmm. it is that you're looking for and, and not be too general mm -hmm. in what you're looking for. And I say be prepared. Bring enough resumes with you. A lot of companies now, their applications are online, but when you go to a job fair, be prepared. Mm -hmm. Bring enough resumes with you to give to the companies that you're targeting. Don't come without one. And be dressed professionally. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend you bring, uh, you don't bring your spouse or children unless the spouse yes. is looking yes. for a job. And you know, these are real things that I've seen mm -hmm. at all types mm -hmm. of career fairs and job fairs. We have a program called Yellow Ribbon, and that's where the reserve um, components like the Air Force and Army, Navy, Marine Corps, mm -hmm. and the Florida, for example, here in mm -hmm. Florida, the Florida National Guard, they are in a position that they're going to be processing out, or in some cases with the Guard, they're being 
getting ready to come on orders and to deploy. Mm -hmm. So they bring their families with them. Now they provide a childcare mm -hmm. space, but they're just like you said, sometimes they have to have them. Mm -hmm. How much of a distraction is that, if any? It is a distraction, I will tell you. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it may not be the case, but the impression may be that, you know, um, there might be an issue with mm -hmm. child care, which mm -hmm. unfortunately may or may not be the case. Mm -hmm. But um, the other thing is that, you know, we want to have your time and your focus, and sometimes yes. it's distracting mm -hmm. when you have little ones running around mm -hmm. or pull, pulling things or right. crying. And I would say, too, if you have to, or have the need to bring your dependents with you, I would have, if the spouse is with you, have the spouse walk away while you mm -hmm. talk with the recruiter so there's not that distraction. Correct. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Because we're usually there, we try to be there, and mm -hmm. we can pass that on so that they know. I think the yellow ribbons may be a little bit different than going to Correct. a job fair. Right. It's a different, yeah. it is, you have a different objective. And there's objective. a lot of stress. I mean, especially right. the ones about to deploy. Right. Right. right, and I can understand why they would want their family right. with them. Right, and that, that's a specific instance where an employer right. would understand and right. know and right. get. Right. But right. most job fairs or career fairs that are not military yeah. focused, right. they won't understand. Exactly, right. they're not going to be like that, oh, yeah. that most definitely. How about promptness in arriving for the interview? And when does the interview really begin? The interview begins <laughs> when you enter the property. Yes. Correct. So if, for instance, if there's a security guard at the gate before you can enter the property itself, your interview begins there because they are filming you. Mm -hmm. So you can watch the tape. The security guards will at times call back to the recruiter and say, your um, candidate is here, but my God, were they rude. Mm -hmm. And so, the same thing when they come in the door and they're it makes The first impression is a lasting impression, mm -hmm. so if you think that coming up to the security gate or coming to the receptionist doesn't have an impact, mm -hmm. it does. It does. Everybody's mm -hmm. important. Politeness is very important. Mm -hmm. Not arriving any more than 10 minutes prior to an interview mm -hmm. is key. How about if I show up in uniform? What does that tell you? Well, if you show up in uniform, then that tells me that either you're still in the military, one, and you didn't have an opportunity to change. That is your uniform of the day. Um, and we don't penalize you for having your uniform mm -hmm. on because we look at military veterans as people of good quality and good character. So that doesn't matter to us. Mm -hmm. But if you have an opportunity to change, mm -hmm. I would change into something that's more professional, like um, business dress. And I think, too, if you tell the recruiter at the get, mm -hmm. look, I really want to interview, but I have to uh, be on patrol or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, mm -hmm. um, would it be acceptable if I come in uniform? And usually right. you'll say mm -hmm. yes and tell the manager, look, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're coming from work. And mm -hmm. we've done that even for civilians that mm -hmm. if and they're... Have respect for yeah, you. Right. exactly. The communication. Mm -hmm. Because That's sometimes it conveys, at least what we understand, it conveys yes. that I'm not really work ready yet because I'm still on active duty. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. correct. For a period of time. Mm -hmm. What I thought about while you all were talking amongst yourselves is what do we do and not do in an interview? What are those habits that we have, perhaps as military, that we should avoid? Or mm -hmm. what is it about our posture, our expression, the way we convey our message? Mm -hmm. What do we need to avoid and what do we need to strengthen? I would think that one of the things is when you're talking to a recruiter mm -hmm. or the interviewer, that you keep in mind that they may be civilian and not yes. retired military. Mm -hmm. So if I ask you a question specifically on equipment that you've worked on and you give me a military term, I'm not going to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think that. and. Um, I'll defer to Josie. And, and also when you're, when you're interviewing, um, relax mm -hmm. when you go into an interview. We, military, we tend to be stiff. Our posture is very straight. Um, we don't know how to relax yet. So that's one of the key things that you want to do when you go into an interview. Relax. You'll be able to answer the questions and you won't be nervous when you're relaxed. I think it's important to um, do your research on the company before mm -hmm. you go in, mm -hmm. so you're prepared to answer any questions the interviewer might ask mm -hmm. about the company. Also, uh, prepare questions yourself. Ask clarifying yes. questions that yes. you are interested in knowing. Mm -hmm. And I would say, too, um, create your brand mm -hmm. before you go to the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the 
interview is asking you questions about yourself, you've already created a brand for yourself. You know how to market yourself better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too that uh, keep focused on the question at hand. Mm -hmm. Don't veer away from, you know, when the re recruiter or the hiring manager asks you a question and you mm -hmm. kind of go off in a different vent or vein mm -hmm. to keep to the subject at hand. Mm -hmm. um, also not talk too much and not too little. If somebody asks you a question, mm -hmm. don't just say yes or no, kind of expound on that. Mm -hmm. And also concentrate on your strengths too as yes. to, so, to what the job description says and kind of, as Josie said, brand yourself, wherein if I look at a description, I know what they're looking for, mm -hmm. and then kind of tailor my experience and my skills and qualifications directly to what it is that they're looking for. How long do you have to read a resume to make that decision? This goes mm -hmm. to the hiring manager, it goes in file 13. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> at, the mo at the most? Yeah. If it comes to us now, um, my company, when I get a res I look at all the resumes. Yeah. But so there are other companies cool. that have resume mm -hmm. searches, that have keyword searches, that if you don't have the right keywords, your, your resume never... You never make it. Exactly. Never makes it to the hiring manager. So you need to look at advertisements mm -hmm. and also the ad of the particular company of yes. keywords and make sure if you have those experience not yes. to just put the key words in there unless you have it. Make sure that it's in your resume. And make sure you look at the job description mm -hmm. as and detail your resume as to exactly. what they're asking for if you have that experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bring a resume with you to mm -hmm. the interview. Mm -hmm. The hiring manager may not, or they may or may not have a copy, but you want to bring a copy with you or to several. your interview. Yes, or several. Because, and also certifications mm -hmm. and, and yes. awards and evaluations might be appropriate too. What about the second resume? I have my one to get the interview, mm -hmm. but here's the real story about me, my branding, mm -hmm. that I don't want to bore you with all this, but from the hiring manager's side, this should answer all of his or her questions about what my experiences really is, especially if I'm in the IT field. Mm -hmm. And all my, and th is that just overwhelming? The one that tells the story about you, it's going to be a little bit more overwhelming if you have three or four pages. Okay. Um, the recruiters don't have time to look at that many pages and neither right. do the managers right. that are going to be interviewing this candidate. Okay. So I would say, look at the job, detail in your resume what this job description is asking for mm -hmm. if you have done these things. So rewrite your resume based on the job that you're trying to get. As opposed to bringing a second mm -hmm. resume with you, be prepared to answer those questions yes. yourself. Um, train with somebody, mm -hmm. practice with somebody, mm -hmm. but you don't want it on a piece of paper. You want to relay that information to the hiring manager directly. Yep. Your resume is your calling card, but mm -hmm. it isn't, yes. it isn't all about you. And make sure you're able to speak to what you put on your Correct. resume. With all your experience, mm -hmm. do the people that really practice their interviews, does it show that they've gone through their own mortar board first before they've come to you? Mm -hmm. does, yes. it, does it stand it, out it does. that much? It does. It Most does. definitely. It does. And also eye contact, mm -hmm. smile, mm -hmm. yes. your, your posture. Don't get too comfortable, mm -hmm. but may, you know, you want to be professional without being mm -hmm. looking like you're a wood stick mm -hmm. or like too rigid. Stiff. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And remember to turn off your cell phone. Oh, yeah, most um, definitely. Don't chew gum when you come to an interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just you want to have a the nice little things program. that yeah. you think are. Here's your chance for posterity. What are those things? Boy, I wish I could tell somebody this. Mm. What what comes to mind when you think about interviewing? Do and don'ts. Do this and don't do that. That really sticks out. Boy, this one came and she said or he said, and it just it was an absolute turn off. So you want war stories, is what? You well, <laughs> anyway, yeah. But it brings a unique piece because you're sitting there and you listen to everything day in and day out and you know what. Be on time. Yes. To your interview. Right. And it's a shame to get that point and just let something small as your phone being mm -hmm. on yes. destroy the whole accomplishment of making it there. Mm -hmm. And answering the phone. Yes. And not, not know, sometimes funny, I, but answering. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to like forgive you if the phone goes off, but if you would answer, answer it. it. Um, mm. is, you know, no, no. is a little bit different. And keep to the job at hand. Don't start talking about your family. Mm -hmm. Don't start talking. Not that I don't care about your family. I do. Mm -hmm. But if it's not pertinent to the job, you don't mm -hmm. want to volunteer a lot of information. And, and I think that's something that we can prepare veterans more for. A lot of them have not mm -hmm. interviewed in 20 years. Right. So being more prepared to interview for this particular job mm -hmm. would be, that would help them. 
and also telling them don't talk about your family because they think I've heard veterans tell me well you didn't ask me about my family I'm not going to ask mm -hmm. you about your family I'm interested in what your skills are Correct. for this particular job I know that really the interviewer should not be asking you personal mm -hmm. questions. They should not be asking you mm -hmm. about your religious affiliation mm -hmm. or yes. your how many children or marital mm -hmm. status. And, and there's some, they also should look at legal and illegal questions to ask. Yes, exactly. At the end of the interview, ask the hiring manager, do I have the qualifications for the position mm -hmm. that may give you an opportunity to strengthen their mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. strengthen their thoughts on you for the position. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about a phone call that, to you that says, I'm not looking for a job as much as I'm just doing some background information on the company. Do you have a moment to speak with me? Or can you direct me to someone that can? Well, I will just tell you from personal experience, mm -hmm. um, companies are very short-handed. And I believe me, I would love to talk to every single mm -hmm. person but we really don't have the resources to do that because if we did, we wouldn't be able to do some of the other right. jobs. And, it, yes. and just okay. so people realize that if you're calling and, and, or your resume gets sent, you're not automatically gonna get a response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and sometimes people have time to, to speak with you, sometimes they don't, but don't take it as a personal affront mm -hmm. if they can't. What parting words would you have for our veterans? Be prepared when you're looking for a job outside of the military. Research the companies that you're looking to join. Find out as much information about this company as you can because most times, most often, when you go into an interview, that's one of the first questions they ask you. What do you know about this company? Yeah. Brand yourself, um, identify yourself, become involved in social networks, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Twitter, follow companies online. I would say be true to yourself too and really try to focus in on what you really want to do and, and it, I know it's not easy, it can be very scary to transition mm -hmm. from one position to another but to really, as the ladies have said, be prepared, send a thank you note, yes. um, just be cognizant of the fact that they have a lot to offer and uh, take advantage of their resources. resources. Ladies, I want to thank you for joining us today and, and for all of our people that were here today. Thank you for the time and we hope that those of you that are watching this got something from it. You don't have to be a veteran to, to appreciate what was said today. Mm -hmm. And again, this was Veterans Assistance on Gaining Employment and thank you again. Job seekers, you can upload your resume, view job postings, and research labor market information at EmployFlorida.com. Welcome back to more of Job Hunting 101. My name is Dale Green, host of the program. We're very delighted to share some very pertinent information with you. We have another model in the studio. His name is Brian, and his facial hair would indicate that he's not a rock star. He's a conservative person who's wearing a pinstripe suit. Uh, Terry, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, your first impressions. Okay. Very good point, Dale. The facial hair is important. That's one of the things that stands out. Um, and Brian is, has done a nice job. He's very clean shaven, which looks good. His hair is, is well done. It's very tidy, and he has a nice cut. It's not long, you know, it's not messy. It's just he looks very professional. Um, and then moving to his, to his clothing, his attire, perfect. He has the black suit, pinstripes, matching jacket, matching pants, um, very professional look. He has the white shirt on, very crisp, clean, looks nice. And the tie, not too vibrant of a color, you know, it blends nicely. Down to his shoes, 
Um, he's wearing closed-toed shoes, <laughs> which he should for a male. But um, it, the, the black shoes that blend nice with the look, and um, yeah, he's done a great job. As far as jewelry is concerned, he is not wearing any type of jewelry that 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 stands out. You know, no earrings. There, there are no. Um, uh, he, he doesn't have any. Um, he has one ring, which is which is nice to see, and it's very simple, and it looks good. So, and he's carrying his portfolio. Again, and, it's the black portfolio blends nicely with his look. Right, and he's buttoned up. He's has, he has the button up look. He does, and he has buttoned himself up. He does. That's a good. What, what's your uh, take what, on one observation or one thing that I'd like sure. to add here is that you know while Brian is very clean shaven, I would add that you know for someone who may have long hair that's going into an interview, one of the recommendations would be would be to pull it back away from the face. Um, secure, perhaps with a bit of gel just so that everything stays in place and is behind the person so that when they're interviewing it's not as exposed because, you know, people are hired who have long hair. So that's just a recommendation. Yes. Can he, wear, can he get away with a ponytail as a man? You can. Uh, probably not recommended, but you can. Yeah. I, I would mean, agree. I guess you can always grow it back, but to make a good first impression, uh, do you want to satisfy your significant other or your friends, associates, acquaintances, or do you want to get the job? Well, and I think, you know, Dale, um, truth be told, I, I think, you know, some of it depends on the culture because if you're, if you're interviewing in, a, in, an art, in an artist type environment, sure. graphic artists, creative environment, marketing environment, public relations environment, that something like that would be more acceptable versus perhaps where I live, you know, a financial services environment. So again, that's something that, you know, it really is going to depend on, on the culture and the industry and the nature of the business. Right. Yeah. We'd like to thank Brian for letting us twist his arm, I mean to volunteer for this today, but he, does he not make a good first impression? Yes, he does. He definitely does. Right. Employers, you can search candidate resumes and research labor market information at employflorida.com. Tampa Bay Community Network, may I help you? Hello, I would like to produce a TV show on your planet. Great. Do I have to be a Tampa resident? No, you don't have to be from Tampa to take our video production training classes or to have a show on our channels. Really? Well, I'm from another planet. Is that okay? It's fine. Tampa Bay Community Network members come from Orlando, Val Rico, Lakeland. They come from everywhere. Being from another planet is no problem. You're from my galaxy, right? Yes, I am. How do I get started? Sign up for orientation class. We have them twice a month and they are free. I'm in. Sign me up. Anyone over the age of 18 can take TBCN video production and Final Cut Pro edit classes, produce programming, and host programming right from our studios at the University Mall. Call 813-977-5200 today and sign up for our next orientation class, no matter what planet you're from. Today is a special day. Today we gather as a nation and as an international community to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. She's been recognized by religious figures and politicians around the world. To us, she's just Rachel, but to the rest of the world, she is the woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not to drive home buzzed. Here today to honor Rachel is the family whose lives she spared. <laughs> 